Awesome. We are now recording our Chaos Evolution Working Group meeting on December 19, 2019. Welcome. Welcome, Hello. everybody. <laughs> all, all one of us. <laughs> um, so I figured today will probably be pretty short since it's just you and me. Um, but here, let me go ahead. I, I will throw the meeting notes in the chat, unless you haven't pulled up already, but I'll just throw yep, them here good. in case. Cool. Um, so since today is the last meeting before the metrics release, um, which is on the first, uh, I think at this point, we're mostly just, we've got a couple extra, met we've got a couple metrics that we have identified for the new uh, release. Um, I think there's issue age, issue resolution, issue resolution duration, sorry. And I think there is another one it might be one of these code changes. No, those are both in there. But um, we do have both of these in the release sheet that are both ready. Um, we might have time to do one or two more today if we want to. Um, oh, it says my internet connection's unstable. Well, let's hope it's not too unstable to be unusable. You're um, cutting in and out a little bit. Yeah, I figured <sighs> that's what I get for not paying for more expensive Wi-Fi, I suppose. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. Um, so if we want to, we can go over the ones that we've are ready for release, or we can just, you know, just say, we're all good one last time. We can give them a sign off. Um, we can look at ones, if there are any last minute ones we want to throw together before we release. I'm also okay with that. Um, you know, since it's so close to the end of the year and so close to metrics release, I don't know if we can do a whole lot of, you know, starting new work right now, if that makes sense. I agree. Um, I put in the minutes two metrics that um, Matt had mentioned during the meeting two days ago, during the community meeting, the new contributors closing issue and the issue response time. Um, and so those are the metrics that he said would be close to ready. And I was hoping that maybe we can use today to, you know, polish them up, create the pull request, sure. and get them off our plate. That sounds good to me. Shall we do it? Okay. New contributors closing issues. All right. I see there's an anonymous Loris in here. You look particularly Loris like today, Georg. Yeah, and you look bat like. Oh, well, you know you what? I'll take that. You have a bat cape. <laughs> I am. I'm the Batman. <laughs> oh my goodness. This <laughs> <laughs> um, right. metric is an indication of the volume of new people who are closing issues at any point in time, and a person closed issue for the first time, an indication of some stickiness for the individual within a project especially for contributors who are not also committers. Okay, I'm gonna start doing some weird formatting of things. Okay. Um, it's, I know it will not translate when we, um, copy it over. When we copy it over, but it makes it more pleasant to work in. Yes. I agree. Things like optional need to go. I'm not really sure what this is doing here. Okay, so we have no references. We have nothing in this section yet. Wow, this metric is blank almost. Oh, geez, yeah. That's something in the description, and that's about it. <laughs> Although I don't think this one would be too. 
Oh, I'm gonna change the description. Okay. When I um, read it, it said new people who are closing issues. New people I thought were people new to the project. Yeah. But when I read on, it was people who close issues for their first time. Yeah. Um Should we include uh, a link to the definition of a contributor or like a contributor metric in the common re working group instead of reiterating that here? Just like, this is what a contributor means. Yes, we should do that. Okay. It's probably under what? Data collection or references? Mm, I don't know. I have to look for it. It might be either in common or it might be in the evolution working group. I don't know. It is in common. I just am trying to think where we should put it in the doc, like where oh, the metric should okay. go. Oh, you, you found the reference. I see. Yeah. Oh, under the references. Oh, yeah. You're right. That would make sense. Okay. Well, I've got to read the. This metric is an indication of the volume of people who are closing issues for their first time. This data collection is probably the same way you would collect data about contributors. Filters. Filters. There's not really many, are there? How do we uh, want to deal with uh, reopening issues? Does that 
like if I close an issue and then it gets reopened, does that still count as me closing it? Do you think, like, if it's the first issue I've ever closed, then is that still a new contri uh, Is that still a contribution for the first time for me? Good question. I sometimes close issues out of uh, mistake and then open mm -hmm. it again. Mm -hmm. So if we take that as an assumption that if you immediately open it again, then you weren't intending to close it. Mm -hmm. Um, but th those are isolated cases. I, mm. I would say it's not the norm. Um, but I know a lot of people who have accidentally closed issues before. Mm -hmm. So, would we complicate the metric too much if we say, if we close it and immediately open it within, I don't know, a one hour window? It doesn't count. I know it would be easier to calculate if we just say, well, count. Yeah, that's true. How about we make a note somewhere? Yeah, I think we make a note. That this can be an issue? Maybe it's worth. Because this, I think this specific topic of reopening issues we've talked about before with the other issue metrics. So maybe it's worth it to just kind of come up with a, it's probably not advisable to make a blanket term. Yep. Okay, there we go. My mic got unplugged. Um, to have like a blanket case like this is just normally how we deal with reopening issues and then by metric we can say if we do something specific about reopened issues but you know how many metrics would that apply to do you know what i mean should we yeah. just treat each case individually i think reopening has different meanings and different metrics i agree yeah so i think we need to treat it separately here okay Yeah, I'm okay with just. Sure. I'll, I'll put an up. Yeah, well, let's put a note under. How about we add a filter. Yeah, just include reopened. Uh, or like you know, should I count issues that have been reopened within the time period? So it's an optional filter. It's a nice way to make a note. Visualization. I like it. Does Augur implement this metric? Uh, I will find out for because you. Because I know Grimoire Lab does not. I'll be a bit surprised. I don't, uh, I, I'm just gonna check. I don't remember off the top of my head. And these, I don't think uh, Grimoire Lab has this metric. I've never seen it. That's yeah. Although we do have the activity history on issues, so it should just be a matter of writing a query. I think. Let me. Okay, Augur does not have it. I can confirm that. No, you know, Grimoire Lab does not store when the first time was someone closed an issue. So what I can do is have a hmm. I can look at who closed issues during a certain period of time, but I cannot see if this was their first time closing. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. 
So we have no visualization for it. That's okay. We can make up a visualization, <laughs> say a list, a table or something. Yeah. Oh, wait. Can I just find a typo? And then already, oh, great. <laughs> I'm going to remove tools providing the metric because we don't have that. Okay. I just found a a misprint in the uh, <laughs> the issues close metric. I'll have to go back and change it. But uh, in the data reference section, data collection, yeah. said in the case of GitHub, all it's or uh, no, sorry, in it's a different one. Where is it? Did I get rid of it already? One of them said like in the case of Jira, active issues are defined as issues that change to the closed state. It said active issues instead of closed issues. Okay. I think because we copy pasted it. So well, I'm, uh, I'm going to go. So this is from the closed metric? Yeah. No. I might need to edit it, but I was like, uh, well, actually, it probably shouldn't. I probably should just point a link to say what a closed issue is. It's like, I'm not really sure how much we need to define like what a new contributor is or like because we've already talked about uh like you know what the two pieces of data that you are that are needed for this like we've already talked about how to define the mail spaces We could almost just use this uh, one sentence here and link to the definitions. Then we don't have to write out. Yeah, I like your definition. Yeah, I like your sentence. All right, I'll copy in the contributor ones. We can remove this. Look at us. Look at that. Damn, we're pros at this, huh? <laughs> Sounds like we've done this before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think we have a complete metric. Look at that. That was record time. We did that in like less than 20 minutes. Wow. Dang. And it's All so right. slick. So lean. A lean, mean, measuring machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I will go ahead and work on a pull request.
going to add this to Let's get the pull request. All right, We've got the pull request open. Shall we do the next one? Yep, let's do the next one. Awesome. Response. You requested the review, my review. Okay. So now that I'm reviewing this, we have in the question how many contributors are closing, but then in the text we write people and the question in the community growth MD in the focus area also talks about persons, not contributors. So we're being inconsistent. Right. We should have a consistent language. You're right. Yeah. Since the name of the metric is new contributors closing issues, I would opt for contributors. I agree. <sighs> At some point, I'm going to open a pull request uh, to restructure the repo a little bit. OK. Um, Because right now, if I want to find a metric, I have to go to the metrics folder. Right. All the metrics are there. But I think of metrics in terms of their focus area. Focus areas. Uh -huh. And then I have to go to the focus areas to then find the metric. Yeah. And I think we can merge those together. And at least that's what we've done with other working groups. Yeah. So let me know what you think about that idea where I think that's great. We'd have like the metric definition files in the focus area folders. Exactly. And then the I'm a, yeah, huge proponent, big, huge fan here. So let's take a look at um, the diversity inclusion, for example. Yeah. So the first one where we did it that way. So if you are coming to the repo and you want to go to focus areas, you just click on the focus areas and you can either advance to each focus area from the readme or from the folder structure and then you go to whatever focus area you're in and then you have the readme that tells you what metric is this but you can also just use the folder structure right so it's redundant you have a fast way going through the folder structure but you always have the nice way of the readme yeah i like this a lot I like this a lot. I think we should do that. I'm, okay. I'm a fan. Yay. OK, at some point, we don't have to do it during the meeting. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've, uh, I changed it on that the 
the language of the new contributors closing issues uh, to say indication of volume of contributors who are closing and when a contributor closes an issue for the first time. Um, is there anything else besides that language change? Mm -hmm. Volume number. I'm thinking if we should just call it number of people, indication of the number of people. Uh -huh. Volume, I, you know, volume you can use when you don't want to count specifically, but people you can count. Uh -huh. So volume is good for drops of water. Uh -huh. You just have a volume of water. Right. Minor word, not important. Yeah. Otherwise, I, yeah, thank you. Okay. I'll go ahead and push. Okay, I added to the Google Doc at the top that this metric has been proposed through PR 277. Awesome. The way we have some traceability. And then in the um, new contributors closing issues, this one is almost ready. I'll put it to pending where we can insert the pull request number. Excellent. Just around progress, actually. Issue contributors. All right. Cool. All right. Issue response time. So the question says, how much time passes between the opening of an issue and a response from other contributors? Um, I would propose to make it say from a maintainer um, or something like that, because uh, I think it's more indicative of how fast somebody who's in charge of the project gets. Well, actually, I don't know, because in some cases it would be like, I would want to know how fast somebody who's in charge of the project gets back to my issue, but not everybody who would be a maintainer is going to be closing an issue and it still is an important metric how about we add a filter yeah response from role and project for example first main chain of response right because i agree with you it is important to know who is responding mm -hmm. And I think another thing, you know, this might be, this is a bit of a gray area. I don't really know how to deal with this. But uh, so, for example, on the Augur repository, there's a bot um, that anytime somebody who's never opened an issue or a PR for Augur before does that, uh, it immediately comments on it. It's like, hey, thanks so much for opening your first issue or PR. Here's some guidelines to follow. Here's some documentation. Here's the people to reach out to if you get confused so that's like an instant response time every single time if they're new um yeah so does that bot count as a does that count as a response does it not count because it's not a person is it still contrib like 
that's kind of a gray area. Do you know what I mean? I'm not really sure how to deal with that. I don't know if that's a just like a filter or if it's just we don't include it in the metric. And I, that, yeah, that, and that's kind of, you know, not every repository has that, but there are some that do. And that could, that could kind of throw with your numbers. You know what I mean? Yeah, there is a bot that automatically responds. Then that metric is meaningless because yeah. it just says the bot is working but it doesn't yeah. tell anything about the community itself. So I agree we need to have a filter uh, to filter out those bot interactions. me. Do we need closed issues? First time, uh, first response time can- or, sorry, Not first response time, oops. <laughs> I don't know why, I kind of went on autopilot. Issue response uh, time is, yeah, is also interesting for active issues. Yeah. I'm not really sure what to put for the data collection strategies. So issue active refer to issues new as a for, for finding a definition of what an issue is. So we can refer to issues new for a definition. Let's do that. I like that.
me see if Augur has any visualizations. Now I know Grimoire Lab does. At least for merge requests, we have it. I found the um, display. Okay. I think we have the endpoint, and I thought we had a visualization, visualization but I don't see it. That's, so I think as long as we have just even one of them, it's all right. How do you want me to send it to you? Uh, if you just want, if you email it to me, I can throw it in the. Uh, the pull request. Gotcha. Carter. CC Carter Landis at Gmail. That works. Okay, email us on its way. Awesome. I look forward to receiving it. I can also drop in the um, visualization here in the spreadsheet, but uh, in the Google Doc, but it's hard to get out. That's true. So I'll put it in here, but we also need to. Are there any aggregators for this? Uh, average or median? Good idea. We just we default to days. I think that's a good default uh, length of time for this. Okay. Is that like a uh, a filter or a parameter? The the interval of time periodicity, whatever you want to call it, like response time in, well, actually, no, that doesn't really matter. I was thinking like response time in, you know, minutes, days, hours, but really you can convert that even after the metric. It's not necessarily so crucial to the, you know what I mean? Yeah, so what I'm thinking is here removing uh, for issues open during a given time period and just call it average response time in days. And then yep. we have a filter for date issue was opened. Okay. Yeah. 
you got it. We could almost duplicate this page and search replace issue with code review. Yeah. Or review, review response time. We could. Because I have bad idea. the same is true for pull requests. Yeah. I'm going to pull it up right now. Oh, here, data collection strategies. We need to add that we also need data for response time. Does this make sense to subtract the issue open timestamp from the first response timestamp? That makes sense. Okay. Should we? Okay, this is a really edge case, but. <clears throat> Bring it on. Somebody opens an issue, immediately closes it, and then it gets opened again, and somebody comments it, or somebody comments on it after it's closed still, and it didn't get any comments before it closed. Like maybe they did something wrong, so they just closed it, and then somebody's like, hey, why did you close this? Maybe it was just like they misclicked. You know what I mean? Is that too edge case to worry about? You know, because then, then it's like, you know, do we go from the first timestamp or the second timestamp? Because it's closed, do we count, you know, do we still count the response time on a closed issue? Is it just open ones? Um, is it just about the first response, no matter what the response looks like? You know what I mean? I feel like it's a pretty edge case. It's not going to happen a whole lot. I think it does happen. I've seen it several times where someone writes a comment, close it or close it, and then writes a comment why they closed it. So it happens quite a bit. I'm seeing it happening. Okay. Um, I don't know about the uh, closing, opening, commenting, whatnot. Um, I think we should just ignore whether it's opened or closed. Okay in this uh, first response time. Mm -hmm. um, but I did add a filter to say we look at the status of the issue mm -hmm. so that we can, for example, look at only open issues. Right. Um, and then also, uh, do we, well, how do we want to count responses from the person who opened the issue if they're the first person to comment on it? I think we, we need to exclude those okay i would agree. i would agree i don't even know if it should be an optional like filter to say the first person if i'm the first person yeah so maybe just uh, the data refer the data collection would be subtract yeah um or from the first the timestamp of the first response not made by 
the user who created the issue. Actually, no, I like yours. I want Mark's, I think. Yeah, do not, yeah, don't count responses if created by the author of the issue. Okay. All right, I think that works. Sweet. Easy, look at us. Two in a meeting. We're breezing Killing through it. <laughs> All right, should we leave this? We should probably get rid of this references section then. There are different opinions. That's true. Sometimes we leave it, sometimes we remove it. Yeah, I don't really know which one to do anymore. <laughs> I have a preference, but Matt has a different preference. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's preference is to leave it, right? Yeah. Yeah, my years and mine is to get rid of it. That's what my preference would be, but I also see the value in just having consistent headings for every yeah. metric. So that when you come to metric, you know it's intentional. I, I do too. Uh, some battles you just can't win. What's your response? I need to make a new. I'm working on uh, opening the PR right now. Yep, I figured. I'm reviewing the other PR right now. Sounds good. I see you opened the pull request. You bet.
What focus area is this one in? Um, I think issue response time or issue, what's it called? Uh, issue resolution. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to add it to that. Oops. Gotcha. Okay. I was, I was looking at issue resolution. I was like, hmm, we have issues new, active, closed, but no response time. Um, yes. It should be, yeah. <laughs> is it an efficiency, maybe? Because it could also very well fit in efficiency, but it's not code development efficiency. That's true. So, yeah. Okay, I have pushed. Perfect. Approved. And then if you go to the other pull request that we opened first, um, I have just one minor edit, yep. I suggest. All right, I approved and I'm going to merge. Perfect. And then we can update our spreadsheet. Yep. We need to get the um, URLs. go. Did you drop in the URLs? No? Okay, I'll do that now. Oh, the um, the naming. So I'm in the metrics folder, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and capitalized files are at the top, and non-capitalized uh -huh. ones are at the bottom. I was looking for issues, maintainer response, 
Mm-hmm. Not that. The new contributors closing mm-hmm. issues. Did you capitalize that? No. Uh, yeah, it is. Which one did you merge? Uh, I merged the one that was um, the one that you opened, the one that had a minor formatting fix. Oh, okay. I'll I'll merge the others then. Okay. Sorry. Um, you made the change. Yes, I made both of them. Excellent. I think so. I just merged it. That way we get the URL that we need. Mm -hmm. And then we can call it a day. Sounds good to me. Start that. Yeah. (laughs) All right. New contributors closing issues. There it is. Copy link location. And you did capitalize it. That's perfect. Yes. And ready. And then we have, what's the name of the other one? Issue response time. Issue response time. Perfect. Copy link location. Paste the URL. Oops. Here. And one more ready. Look at that. Awesome. (laughs) That's what I'm talking about. All right. Well, you have a... Good Christmas. I'm going to stop the recording. All right. Sounds good.